Now we move on to turn two of this three-turn playthrough, the Battles of July 1st scenario in a splendid little war. In the first turn, we saw movement and combat in the vicinity of El Cane. In this second turn now, all units on the map can move and fight, and that includes the ones around Kettle and San Juan Hills. We start with the weather phase, but this is skipped in turn two. On to the U.S. supply phase, and now we check U.S. units to make sure they're in supply. As we can see here, all units in the vicinity of El Cane, as well as all U.S. units in front of Kettle Hill, and those at El Pozo can trace a line of supply to the supply source, which is hex 0937. Next, we go to the U.S. command phase, and now we check to see if all U.S. units are in command. That is within command range of their respective leaders. And here we see that some units of the 2nd Division, those in the vicinity of Fort El Viso, cannot trace a line of command of four hexes to General Lawton. So we mark those units as being out of command, and we will signify that by using this out of command marker. And that means that all units of the 2nd Division there are out of command. We can see that the remaining units of the 2nd Division can trace a path of four hexes to their Commander General Lawton. So those units are in command, as well as the units of the Volunteer Brigade. And all U.S. units in the vicinity of uh, Kettle Hill are also in command. On to the U.S. reinforcement withdrawal phase. There are no reinforcements for the U.S. or units to withdraw. Now it's the U.S. movement phase. And here is where the dire effects of being out of command enter play. Units that are out of command can only move one hex and they cannot execute offensive fire combat nor assault combat. And defensive fire combat is halved. So those units of the 2nd Division are practically useless until they come within the command of General Lawton. Now the U.S. player has a tough decision to make. Those three units that are out of command will remain out of command unless Lawton moves in their vicinity. And uh, Lawton has five regiments that you see here. And uh, these five regiments, at least three of them, could conceivably attack the Spanish units defending San Juan Hill there under Colonel Vaquero in this turn. However, if they do so, in order to attack at uh, full strength, they would have to be in command, so Lawton would have to go with them. And that would leave these three regiments without a leader, and those regiments would not be able to attack. That means that the Spanish would hold on to Fort El Viso, and uh, only the volunteer units would be available to take both Fort El Viso and El Cane. And if the 2nd Division does not move on to San Juan Hill, then that task will be left to the 1st Division, which is quite frankly bogged down in uh, jungle and uh, swamp terrain in front of Fort Kettle. And also the Cavalry Division, which is practically in the same status. And without the 2nd Division, it seems unlikely that the U.S. will take both objectives in the vicinity of El Cane. So, the second division will go in the direction of El Cane, and the three regiments that are in road hexes now move. And at least one of them is in contact with the Tercio guerrillas that are entrenched to the southwest of El Cane. Now we move the regiment that is stacked with General Lawton and the 22nd Regiment. And finally, the 2nd Massachusetts also moves adjacent to the Spanish company under General Del Rey. Next, we move the Volunteer Brigade. And here are the positions of all units after movement. 
and we turn our attention to the units around Kettle Hill. See how many of those can actually move. Most of them are in swamp terrain, which costs four movement factors, while jungle terrain costs two, and many of them are in zones of control of Spanish units. In this game, you cannot move a unit directly from one zone of control to another. So let's say that the 10th Regiment of the Cavalry Division would like to uh, disengage from uh, the zone of control there, exercised by that Spanish company under General Rubin. It would uh, first move to a hex that is out of a zone of control, and then it would have to roll a die, and if it passes a morale check, it can continue moving and then move on to a different hex in an enemy zone of control. So here we'll see the regiment that is with General Wheeler spends four movement points, its entire movement allowance to cross the river and enter that jungle terrain hex. So that unit cannot even move adjacent to the Spanish. So now we will move the rest of the cavalry division's regiments and that's not going to be a lot as you will see. That's the movement of the units of the cavalry division basically trying to move south to get on the road for a move during the next turn. But the next turn is the last turn so they have to dislodge somehow that uh, enemy company that is blocking the path there to the objectives on the south of San Juan Hill. So the problems for the Americans are compounded because the Gatling gun has six movement points. With six movement points uh, it can reach only this hex here. So it can't make it to where the 10th regiment is. That's the best it can do. So now we have to move the units of the 1st Division. Most are uh, practically uh, marooned there in the swamp. There are several that can try to go around it, like the 24th Regiment. It could reach this juncture here, and that's where it will move. Now we move the rest of the units of the 1st Division. And here are the movements of the remaining units of the 1st Division. They're just getting out of the swamp to see if they can reach uh, San Juan Hill uh, through this route here. But I frankly don't see how they can make it in turn 3. I frankly don't see how the U.S. can capture all those objectives in one turn. Especially with this rule that these units cannot move in turn one. Finally we move the uh, units of the Independent Brigade. They also move in a northerly direction as shown here. Now we move the Balloon Unit. It has five movement points. Now we move Battery A and it moves to the same hex where the wagon transporting the balloon is currently located. That's the end of the US movement phase. Move on now to the U.S. combat phase. The U.S. player really doesn't have much choice. It has to designate that 10th Cavalry Regiment to assault that space there with General Rubin. And hopefully the U.S. will try to uh, eliminate those uh, defenders there with their artillery, which is Battery A. But uh, it is far from a... Uh, foregone conclusion. In addition, in the vicinity of Kettle Hill, two regiments of the 1st U.S. Division will be assaulting the uh, hex where the Spanish have an entrenched company under Colonel Baquero. We turn our attention to the situation around El Caney and we designate U.S. assaulting units. And two regiments of the 2nd Division will be assaulting the entrenched guerrillas there in Hex 2528. Meanwhile, the 34th Michigan, which is part of the Volunteer Brigade, will be assaulting the Spanish 2nd Company of the Constitución Battalion and try to take Fort El Viso. And as stated before, the units of the 2nd Division, which are 
near El Visor are out of command, so they cannot assault. Most they can do is provide defensive fire, but that's going to be during the Spanish turn. So the next step is for the Spanish to fire defensively. The Spanish 1st Company of the Constitución Battalion fires at uh, the Hex with uh, the two units of the 17th Battalion of the 2nd Division. Spanish roll on the two column of the fired combat results table. The roll is a two, it is not modified. That's one step loss. The Americans lose their fourth step. And now the second company, which is actually at Fort El Viso, will fire at the 34th Michigan. And the Spanish have uh, two combat factors. They roll on the two column. Roll is a five, no effect. Now the Spanish company with uh, General Del Rey will fire at the 8th Regiment of the 2nd Division. Two combat factors, and because that company is stacked with a leader, there is a minus one die roll modifier. The roll is a three modified to a two, and that is one step loss. So a one six breakdown counter is removed, and uh, that uh, regiment now only has a strength of three, represented by those two counters there. So they will still assault the intended hex. Now the Spanish have a decision to make with the Tercio guerrillas. They can attempt to fire, but they would have to first roll on the variable combat factor table. And there's always one chance in 10 that the unit will disintegrate. So the Spanish will hold their fire and no more units in the vicinity of El Cane will conduct defensive fire. So now the Spanish conduct defensive fire in the area of Kettle Hill and San Juan Hill. First, the Spanish company with General Rubin will fire at the 10th Cavalry Regiment. It has a strength of two. There's a minus one because all firing units are stacked with an appropriate leader, but there is a plus one because defending units are in jungle terrain. So there's no modification. And the roll is a zero, one step lost. And the 10th Cavalry loses one step, and the Americans have already lost a total of six steps. Next, the uh, Spanish Artillery Unit and Infantry Unit in Hex 1421 fire at the assaulting 16th Regiment of the 1st Division. We total the combat factors, that's four. And there's a plus two terrain effects modifier because the Americans are in swamp terrain. And the roll is a one modified to a three, one step loss. And the Spanish die rolls have been deadly. That's the seventh step lost by the Americans. And the Americans can sustain up to nine step losses. If they sustain 10, the Spanish will win. Now the Spanish company with Colonel Baquero fires at the U.S. 2nd Regiment of the 1st Division. That uh, unit is also in swamp terrain. So it's two combat factors. We roll 1d10. Roll is a 6 modified to an 8, no effect. Next, a company of the 1st Puerto Rico Battalion is firing at long range against the 24th Regiment of the 1st Division. So that is an attack in the one column, but there's a minus one because there is a leader with the firing Spanish units. And the roll is a zero, modified to a minus one, but there's no minus one on the table, so it's a zero, that's one step loss. That's the eighth step lost by the Americans. That's the end of uh, Spanish defensive fire. Now we resolve U.S. offensive fire. We start with the 22nd Regiment of the 2nd Division firing at the troops under General Del Rey, which are entrenched. This is an attack on the 6 to 10 column. Any final result of 4 or less will cause a step loss, but there is a plus 1 die roll modifier because the Spanish troops are entrenched. The roll is a 4 modified to a 5, no effect. 
next two breakdown units of the second massachusetts fire at the same defending spanish units but these units roll on the three to five column with a plus one an eight modified to a nine no effect so both uh, attacks by american units adjacent to del rey's forces fail and now the ninth massachusetts which is a stack in general duffield conducts a long range fire attack against those same units and that is five divided by two it's two and a half and we drop fractions so that's an attack in the two column which needs a final result of two or less for a step loss there's a plus one because the defenders are entrenched but there's a minus one because the attackers are with a leader so it's a no modification attack we roll 1d10 is eliminated and that's the first spanish infantry company eliminated in the game and finally the e battery of the first artillery will fire at a range of four hexes against the spanish company at el viso so that is an attack that will be resolved in the three to five column and that needs final result of three or less but because the unit is in a fort there is a plus three die roll modifier so uh, only on a zero will there be a hit and the roll is a nine no effect now we conduct offensive fire in the area around kettle hill we start with battery a of the second artillery it will be firing at the spanish artillery unit and infantry company in hex 1421 it has a strength of four so it will be rolling on the three to five column but there is a plus one because the spanish units are in an entrenchment the americans need a final three or less the roll is a two modified to a three and that's one step lost and the spanish choose to lose their artillery unit so now the americans fire with the rough riders they'll fire at the first company of the talavera battalion which is entrenched the americans roll on the six to ten column but there's a plus one die roll modifier for the spanish and the americans need a final result of four or less but the roll is a six no effect now the americans have their best chance to dislodging general rubin's forces from their entrenchment the gatling gun and the regiment stacked in hex 1122 fire at those spanish forces and it's a total of nine combat factors so they have a fairly decent chance they need a final result of four or less to eliminate that spanish company and then the assaulting uh, units that have been designated could occupy the hex in this turn however there are some modifications there's a plus one because the uh, defenders are entrenched but there's a minus one because all firing units are stacked with an appropriate leader so there's no modification so now we roll 1d10 and the roll is a five no effect now the u.s units that are part of the 24th regiment fire at long range at colonel vaquero's troops they have three combat factors that is a half to one and a half and we drop fractions so they roll on the one column and there's a plus one because the spanish are entrenched three modified to a four no effect another long range attack by the units of the 13th regiment of the first division against uh, colonel vaquero's uh, units so we roll on the two column with a plus one and the roll is a nine modified to a ten no effect now the 21st regiment also conducts a long range fire against colonel vaquero's troops that is a roll on the two column with a plus one four modified to a five no effect that's all the offensive fire attacks by the americans they have no other units in range and with line of sight to a defending spanish unit so now we move on to assault combat and there's four assaults start with the 34th michigan with a combat strength of five assaulting the uh, second company in fort elviso which is on hill terrain so we 
first start by having the attackers because they're uh, attacking across a river, so that's two and a half. We have their strength again because they're attacking uphill, so that's 1.25. And we have their strength again because they're attacking a fort, so that's uh, less than one, but there's always a minimum of one. So they have one combat factor, and the uh, defenders have two, so that's one to two. And there are die roll modifiers. The defender occupies a hill and a fort, so that's a plus three. So this appears to be a hopeless attack. One to two with a plus three. Eight modified to 11, so that's the highest is nine. Attacker eliminated. So the 34th Michigan is eliminated. The 34th Michigan is a three-step unit, so that means that the game ends right here. So the, uh, the Americans lost a total of eight breakdown steps, and the uh, regiment that was eliminated, the 34th, has three more, so that's 11. So that's a loss for the Americans. We don't even have to play through turn three. There's no way they can win. And uh, I wasn't really expecting this. this must, there must be something that I'm doing wrong, but I've read through the rules a few times. So one of the things that I uh, have my doubts, but it seems to be clear in the rules, is how uh, cumulative are these die roll modifiers. For example, here you, say, you see the die roll modifiers for assault, but it says that you apply the results before proceeding to the next combat. That's fine, but nowhere it says that you pick just one of these or the most detrimental to the defender or the attacker. So I apply all those that actually apply. And the same goes here with terrain. Sometimes you have units attacking an entrenchment on a hill. So you would have their strength for the hill and then you would have their strength again for the entrenchment. And I believe that's the way the, the rules state that it is done. So, uh, uh, this is the end of the playthrough, and uh, this has been two turns, and the Americans lost nine steps. Also, something that called my attention was the initial deployment of the American forces here, and it says between rows 12 and 16. So uh, this is row 11, rows 12 and 16. And one hex, they can go up to one hex to the west of this creek here. So they're basically they're setting up in a jungle terrain. You could set them back here on roads, but it's still you're going to have the same problem. You can't move in the first turn, so you only have two turns to capture all these hexes here and all the hexes, the both hexes in this area. So I really don't see how the Americans can do that. Uh, again, I must be doing something wrong, but I've checked through the rules and that's why it's taken me a little while to film this. But I said, well, I'm going to film it anyway. So uh, there must be something that I am doing wrong. If any of you know what it is, let me know. But this is the end of this three turn playthrough that ended in two turns. This is a splendid little war. Spanish-American War, Santiago campaign. I'm sure the campaign game is much more involved and doesn't have these constraints of having to take hexes in one or two uh, or three turns. So, uh, But I, I don't have uh, the time to film 28 turns, uh, so I'm, I won't be doing a full playthrough of this game. So this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.